take a second and we look and see if any surfers are coming or if they're in. No, all looks clear to me. <laughs> Seeing nothing. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You can go to squarespace.com slash to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of my new series, Blind Leading the Blind. In this series, I'm going to be traveling the world, meeting up with other blind people who are experts or professionals in their field and possess a skill or talent that I certainly do not, and they will be attempting to teach me a thing or two. As I always say, just because one blind person can do something doesn't mean that we all can. And in this series, I hope to spotlight some incredibly talented blind people from all different backgrounds, and maybe with their help, I will even find a new hobby or hidden talent. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love trying new things, but it's always fun to try them with a fellow blind person who truly understands what it's like. So I would now like to introduce you to the incredible Pete Gustin. Hey, my name is Pete Gustin, and if my voice sounds familiar at all, it's probably because you've heard me doing movie trailers, television promos, radio station announcements, and commercials uh, for at least the past couple of decades. But before I started reading copy for a living, I was diagnosed at the age of eight with macular degeneration, which was later re classified as Stargate's disease, mine progressed very slowly until about five years ago when it left me with just the ability to kind of differentiate between light and dark. And that's about the time I actually picked up surfing. I'd been very athletic my whole life, doing a lot of sports that required more sight. I found myself in San Diego by the ocean. Everybody told me that I should try surfing. It was scary as hell getting into the ocean and not being able to see it, but I figured I'd try it, and I absolutely fell in love with it. Now, if you are a real OG killer bee, you know that years ago in my early 20s, I matched with a guy named Matthew on Tinder. And when I told him that I was blind, he told me that we couldn't date because I wouldn't be able to go surfing with him, which I felt there was three main issues with. Number one, very weird dating priorities. Number two, we were in Toronto, so he was going to have a lot of problems finding a girl he could go surf with, regardless of disability. And number three, absolutely nobody, I repeat, nobody gets to decide what I am capable of. About six weeks after that happened, I found myself in Southern California taking a surfing lesson for the blind. I had a two hour lesson, I absolutely sucked at it. Uh, however, I did get my best friend Braden out of the deal, so it was all worth it. For a really long time after that experience, I was really frustrated because I hated that I sucked at it. Growing up as a competitive athlete and being a very competitive person and, a, and an athletic person, it frustrated me that I wasn't good at it. But more than that, it frustrated me to think that maybe Matthew from Tinder was right and I couldn't surf. And that was just something I was unwilling to accept. So I had planned that one day I would give myself another chance, take another surfing lesson. The opportunity just hasn't arisen until recently but I didn't want to do it because I wanted to prove Matthew wrong. I wanted to do it to prove myself right, to remind myself, as well as all of you, that my disability does not have to stop me from following my dreams, pursuing my passions, trying new things, even if I do suck. You know, even if I do suck, at least I gave myself a shot to do something that I was intrigued by or interested in. And I want all of you to remember that no matter what your disability might be, or even if you're not disabled, whatever your life circumstance might be, you can still do it. If you wanna try something, please find the time and space in your life to try it. It might look a little different than you expected, and that's okay. Anyways, you could say I've been waiting for this moment for a long time, and although I might have sucked last time, this experience was so different, and I think a big part of it was that I was doing it with another blind person, learning from another blind person who truly understands the experience of learning how to surf for the first time without sight. Before we even got into the water or even close to the beach, we started on land with a surf skateboard, something I didn't even know existed. It's quite literally like a surfboard on wheels. And we did this to practice balance, which as you know, if you can't see, is never a blind person's friend. And I have a ton of different skateboards that emulate the feeling of surfing. They're called surf skateboards. It's, oh, it's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> that is the tiniest little board I've got. Is this actually what somebody my size would skateboard on? That's something a uh, nine pound dog, our nine pound dog okay. Skylar rides that board. It's not me. But you can't, you can ride it, but that's not where I think. I'm going to step on it. Okay. Let's see. You want to hold my, yeah. hold my hand? It's a tiny little Whoop. wiggly board. 
Wee. Hey, you can do it. Now if you're here, if you're regular. Look at me. Oh yeah. So do you feel comfortable going that way or is this way? Oh. Uh, is that? Do you feel backwards right now or do you feel backwards right now? Oh, I don't feel backwards either direction. Am I just like that talented already? You are. You are that talented. Look at me. <laughs> and it's good. This one's gonna be wigglier from side to side. Okay. Can I stand on it? Yeah. Hold me. Though, hold my hand. Just get that foot forward more. Like that? Yeah. Okay. This is technically goofy foot now. If you're going forwards. Okay. So if you want to hold me, I can get you going forwards a little bit. Or are you going on your own? Mm-hmm. I'm a risk it taker. Now if you this hold me, fun. so if you wiggle back and forth, you should have some ability to wiggle back and forth mm -hmm. with your ankles. Yeah. That's what's going to happen on a surfboard. Okay. You're going to feel the board wiggling underneath you, and you're going to keep your ankles and knees moving, but keep your upper body stable. You feel that wiggle mm -hmm. going on? <laughs> you can probably bend your knees like a little bit more. Okay, yeah. okay. Natural born talent yeah. or just still a little kid. Yeah. If you reach out in front of you, right in front of you. This is huge. Yes. Wait, wait, this, is, this, has, this has wheels on it? This has wheels on it. What? This is a surf skateboard. This is crazy. That is going to most closely give you some approximation of what we're going to feel. When Am we I going to take this water. on the streets? Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to carry it out in the street for you because it's Streets huge. of San Diego. Yes. <laughs> Your back foot should be basically above where the wheels are. If you reach underneath and feel where okay, the wheels so are. Okay, so right above them, like right here? Yep. Right. And if you ever feel the need to like fall, you just like jump off. Don't jump off forward or backward. Jump off like off the side of it. Side. <laughs> My right, your left. There we go. I think, is that good? Yeah. That's better. Right. Just okay. keep the knees back too. Yeah. Right. So just, just stay, just hold me and we're going to go. I made you goofy foot by the way. You are now goofy foot like me. Okay. So, and we're going to go forwards and you just, you hold on to me the whole time. Whee! And if you lean the board towards me, the board will come towards me. So you feel it, so you feel yourself turning? Oh, this is fun! It was really Wee! good. <laughs> it's actually really good. Now lean in towards me. Good. Out again. In towards me. And just keep doing that motion. And when we get near the end, I'm gonna tell you to take a hard inward left turn. Once we figured out that I was a goofy foot and not regular, because literally when am I ever regular? Nobody should have been surprised about that. Uh, I think I got the basics down and then people started to get a little too confident in me. Yay! You're doing really good. This is fun. I, I feel like she could do it on her own. Yeah. Do you want to try? Uh, okay. I think, Josh, you have a little too much confidence in me. No. You said earlier you like the speed, right? Yeah. I do. <laughs> or maybe I really am just a natural. Wow, she's a natural. What the hell? So they taught me how to jump off to save myself if things were not going well. Which way is the best way to jump forward, probably, Josh? Jump? If she's getting, I'm gonna have her go oh. about 20 feet and jump, like yeah, as yeah. if it's a surfboard and she's I, done I, with the I, ride. I would say just like with when you're standing on it, just like pop your right foot off right away. Okay, can I can I practice one more time yep. with you? Yep. One yeah. Well, that's what I, so I'm gonna be behind. I'm gonna be a little behind you, trailing you. Okay. I'll step forward and off the board. Yep, yeah, just like that. Okay, so that's how I bail if I. Yeah, just be prepared for flat stop. <laughs> and given I'm an adrenaline junkie who never says no to a challenge, I gave it a go. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm the type of person who will do absolutely anything that I can. Like I'm like, oh, if it exists, I want to try it. Yeah, that's my personality. I, I just, I, it takes. I feel like it usually. My gets mom me. can attest. I am like, oh my God. I go for anything. <laughs> I kicked oh, all yeah. nine months. Thanks, but surprise, surprise, sometimes there are a few challenges when two blind people can't see each other. Tell me when to let go. Uh, I'm going to push you. Oh, so. God. This could go really bad. She's okay. going to go to your, her right right away, Pete. Yes, so she should is. I go forward? Oop, I had to we move. did it. We survived. Hey, we did it. Pete, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you almost ran into her. <laughs> <laughs> but then I really started to get the hang of it. I think I'm beating you. You this, are. But this is a race. You're heavier. <laughs> I am heavier. Holy crap. Look at that. She's really good. Yeah. And then I got my confidence. Yeah, you were holding you're, you're already holding your hand 
When you passed by me, you were like, yeah. <laughs> I the shark is your like thumb and your pointer, yeah. or your thumb and your pinky is a, is a sh Hold my hand, my hand's out, reach. It's like a yeah, That's yeah. a shaka. Wow. This is, <sighs> I like literally, this is so much so more fun than I could now. ever. Uh, I want, no, I want one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Surf skate They're all day. It's a, yeah, these are made by hand boards. Okay, can I go again and try to go on my own from the beginning? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do this on my own, all the way down the hill. I don't think I'm going to get to the bottom. You? I think I'm gonna bail before that. I, this one's pretty wiggly. Like when doing... I'm on my own without you, this is pretty wiggly. Okay. I, I'm not. I've you, I've been so impressed with what you're doing. I think you're gonna make it. And you should be picking up a little bit of speed and action. Now I'm free of the experience. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's almost harder when you're going slow sometimes. You're doing good. Come towards me just a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Small lean. You're good. Come back towards me a little bit. Yep. Now you're, you're like open road. You're good. You're like in the center of the road. And we're getting close to the end. I would go and jump off right now. Thank you for the better confidence speed. I was gonna have you turn around and everything, but you're like so perfectly to. centered I really that I didn't, wanted to do a turn. I feel like we could do it again and you could do it. Yeah! And then I got on the third board of the day, the most wiggly yet, and we realized how reckless we were being and they got me a helmet. Do as I say, not as I do. Always wear a helmet. <laughs> Good catch! I Thank you, Pete! I, said, I can't believe you're even up on this thing. Right you now. jinxed it! Uh, can we go again? Like can we go again? Yeah. Yeah. Can we go again? I feel like I'm having a partial heart attack, but you'll yell if we're getting close to something, right? Oh, you have so much room. I heard like, feet really close yeah, to Yeah, who was it? I was just standing still, and you guys would come, and it was a really cool shot. No, I Recovery. Save, that yeah, was save. Sure. I felt you going away for a second. I was like, come back, come back. And I would, yeah. I left, was like, left, if left. I don't save this, I'm gonna go. After that, we had really worked up an appetite. Okay, so I've worked up a serious appetite. I'm actually so hungry right now. Are you hungry? I'm starving. I'm so hungry um, from all of that crushing it that I was doing. You were. Yeah. But I had to take the opportunity and check out Pete's amazing at-home recording studio and see him do his voiceover actor thing. We had to pop up to the sound booth because this is this is your real thing. Like yeah. online, yeah, yeah, you're the blind surfer, but yeah. like your real thing is being a voiceover artist. Yeah. Which I feel like couldn't have be a more perfect career choice as a blind person. <laughs> it's like the like audio focused, fully yeah. audio centric. There was the trick of learning how to read when I couldn't see, but once I got past that, it was all downhill. Or uphill. Yeah. Depending, depending on how you see it, <laughs> which, which we don't. Um, okay, so he was just doing, we were like in a sound booth, he was showing me how he has this like crazy, how much, you said $30,000 just to soundproof it? Yeah, this booth has got, it's got max weight vinyl, there are 13 inch walls with max weight vinyl in there, and the floor is floating, means it's not attached to the rest of the house, and there's this soundproofing all around it, and that door out there is a 300, it's like 320 pound door, I think, hung up by... I don't know how many there were, like five or six hinges to, because it's such a heavy door. Um, I did a Keanu Reeves movie called Replicas, which I was super excited about because I love Keanu Reeves. It's really fun when you get to do a trailer of with like an actor um, that you know. Mm -hmm. Like if you get a movie and you're like, who are these people? I don't know what I'm doing. But I get all excited when it's something I know. I did Ugly Dolls, which was <gasps> super fun. Yeah, yeah, Ugly Dolls. Yeah. If this were a movie today with your skating, so... Should it be an action movie? Should it be a horror do it, movie? Do it both ways to hear the difference. So if it was an action movie, it would say, uh, Molly Burke came to North County, San Diego to learn how to surf and skate. She's conquering every challenge with Pete Gustin this weekend. So that's action. But if it was horror, if it was any badly, it'd say, Molly Burke came down to North County, San Diego to learn to surf and skate with the blind surfer Pete Gustin. But when she got in the water... It went bad. Okay, make it Disney, make it Disney. <laughs> Disney. Molly Burke came down to North County, San Diego to learn to surf and skate with Pete Gustin. They went on the streets, they hit the water, they surfed, they skated, they had fun this weekend on Disney+. Plus. It's so weird because I feel like I'm like listening to a movie trailer. Like, like because I can't see that you're sitting in front of me. Yeah. I know you're sitting right there, but I can't see you. So to me, I'm like, I just have my headphones in, I'm like listening to 
like a YouTube ad. That's so bizarre. I'm not actually a person. I'm just, just some- Just a voice. Oh yeah. After that, we grabbed a bite to eat and then I got to bed because we had a very early morning to finally hit the beach and get surfing. And you know your girl is not a morning person. So I was in bed pretty quick after dinner. But before we get on to the surfing, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. I've been hosting my website, mollybrookofficial.com, on Squarespace for honestly, like basically as long as I can remember. And I've switched it up, changed the whole look and vibe multiple times using their flexible templates, which essentially allow you to pick pre-made templates and then completely switch it up and change it to make it look completely unique to you and your brand. They also have custom merch now, which is something that I'm super intrigued to look into for my Myself. And even if you don't want to sell merch, they also have online shops so you can sell any product, both physical products and digital products. You can even accept appointments. So if you make appointments with your clients, you can accept those through the platform as well. And on top of all of that, they have analytics that give you insights that can help grow your business. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, you can go ahead and use squarespace.com slash Molly Burke to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name. Anyways, let's get to the beach. We're going to head a little ahead of us and then to the left and walk down some stairs. Okay. And so you speak French or just, just the dog? Just the dog. <laughs> I, I speak dog French. You speak dog French? Yeah. Everything sounds worse from the inside, where we are right now. Okay. And then you get out there and you're like, why was it so noisy? It's not actually that scary. Okay, I'm gonna trust you, Pete. Yep. So you notice the sound right away. Yeah, it's very loud. And you say it sounds loud. So yeah. as a blind person, that's the scariest part. You hear the sound and you feel like something is being taken away from you because our whole world is shaped by sound. Yeah. And it gets intimidating. I, I have tried surfing with a couple other blind guys and they, they get intimidated by the fact that there's noise. You have something noisier. Nisha. Nisha is noisier <laughs> than the ocean. It's nice to have a place for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, area. it's just water where you can drown. No, nope, you're not going <laughs> to drown. Because, yeah. Right next to you, like 24 7. You have two things going for you. You did amazing on the skateboard yesterday. So you've got skill, you've got talent, you're hyper athletic. you got three things going for you. I, that, you're great on the skateboard. Two is it's not going to be deep. And three, we are surrounded by all of my best coaches. If for any reason you need to get out or you're feeling uncomfortable, you just say the word and you're out of the water in an instant, instant. After that little much needed pep talk from Pete, I had to get down to business and wax my board like a true professional. Can I feel the wax? Yep, yeah, there's a big bar of it. So you basically just smoosh it around on the board. Ooh, it's kind of gross. <laughs> and you're also going to be wearing a leash what? that attaches you to the board. That's a normal thing. Okay. All surfers wear leashes. Look at her waxing that board like a pro. Well, if you see someone walking into the water and they don't have wax on the board, that's how you know they're not a pro. Yeah. They're going to be falling. It's their first time ever. And then it was time to suit up. I don't know if I should admit this, but the one time I wore a wetsuit, I peed in it. <laughs> Wet. And the pee just fills the entire wetsuit, so and you are so cozy. warm in your own pee. But, okay, yeah, pee, that, like he never confesses to that, but I know he does. The people <laughs> I was with, I was like, guys, I really have to pee, and they were like, go in the ocean and pee in your wetsuit, and I was like, I am not doing that. And they were like, that's what we all do. And I was like, well, you're the surfer, so I guess I'll do it. And I did all it. And I was like, a good rinse afterwards. Yeah, I had to stay. I like stood there for like a good few minutes. And they were like, are you peeing yet? I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> and then it was. Almost time to get in the water, but not quite yet. So Pete and I are about to get in the water. I have the wetsuit on, and I also have a very special t-shirt on that you gave me. And it says, what, what blind surfer on it? It says blind surfer on the front. I don't know if anybody told you on the back, it says warning blind surfer. Because <laughs> blind um, surfers are a little more dangerous than regular surfers. <laughs> I don't think you're giving me enough credit, Pete, one month ago. What, what's, a, what's a cool surf term? Uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go rip, rip it up. Yeah, so the, I got the biggest writing I could possibly get on a suit because I want everybody in the lineup to know that I'm blind. Because when I'm on the outside surfing big waves, you get some pretty good speeds going on, and surfers don't want to crash into each other. So there's kind of a, they see you, you see them, and you figure out someone's going to go left, someone's going to go right. I don't see any of that. I just go bombing right at you. And if they look up and see blind surfer, they hopefully go, Oh crap, I gotta get out his way. I am a baby about the cold water. Like the part I am most nervous about is actually just how cold the water is gonna be, but I heard you're also a baby, so we uh, need yeah. two little blind babies together. Two to blind babies water. in the water, <laughs> shivering until we get warm. 
My sighted instructor, Nisha, did some pop-up training with me on the sand. I'm using some surf lingo there for you. Okay, so I'm about to do pop-ups with Nisha here, which was the biggest struggle when I tried to surf eight years ago. That was my problem. That's the hardest part of surfing, that and picking which, oh, actually the hardest part is getting in and out of your wetsuit. But the pop-ups will be easy that. compared to that. So you're ready, you're gonna lay on your belly. Okay. And you're gonna scoop back, yep, about right there. Lay down. And I, when I'm like behind you coaching, I'll be like near at your feet. Okay. I might kind of tug on your feet to just remind you like, oh, we need to scoot back a little more. Okay. Or I might tap your feet like yeah. this to remind that you that you need to scoot up a little bit. Because it's basically, we just want this board to be level on the water. We don't want the nose too far down. We don't want the tail too far down. And that requires some flexibility, which I know you have. Oh, beautiful. Yep. And then just stand up and squat like you're sitting in a chair. Yeah. That's what will also come up because you're too far. Beautiful. You've got this perfect. Well, you're going to reach both hands towards the nose. Yeah. Like so, like, so, like, it just puts the gas on. I'm going to be tired by the time I get to the water. How fast am I supposed to do all of that? Oh, we're going to take our time because you have a big board and we've got all the time. You're just going to go faster and faster as you get more comfortable. Okay. And then it was time to get in the water, the moment we've all been waiting for. Here we're seeing some footage of Molly and Pete getting into the water. Just a quick dip to get used to it. Then they're back on the sand, grabbing the boards to head into the water. <laughs> Molly's starting to go. She has a couple of good falls, but she laughs her way through it. That's what you gotta do. She has one where she stays on the board for the longest amount of time that she did. It's pretty awesome. She does that a couple more times. She has her best ride right here, hits the sand at the end, yeah. but she made it really, really far, oh, looking yeah. like a pro. She's killing it. Your eyes are salty. She's like, my mouth is salty, my eyes are salty. <laughs> but I didn't, I haven't, I'm not gonna jinx it, but I haven't swallowed a lot of water yet. So that's good. You're really good at now. telling me when to breathe. Yeah. Or like, like now you can have like a 10 second break and yeah, get like, all your breath. The first time I went, like I was talking and the wave came and hit me. That's how all the water went down my throat. And like the guy didn't tell me no. the wave is coming. Like you're really good at telling me when to do the downward dog. Yeah. For the upper dog? Uh, yeah. Now downward dog is really important. Really she gets back out there, has a couple more rides. It's getting better and better each time. Here we see Elton sitting anxiously on the sand, waiting for Molly to get back. It's so cute, and he's just watching her the whole time. Elton proud of you? Yeah, Elton's nice. so happy. He's like, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So was, there, was it scary at all? It was so fun. Yeah? You, you, <laughs> did no fear in the beginning? Um, you didn't act like it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, one, Nisha's a great teacher. Much better than the person who taught me last time. Two, like, I feel like every time I, every wave we did and I went back out, I, like, I feel confident now that I know exactly when she's going to upward dog, that I know exactly how to count the wave down, and I know like every time I went, I like feel like I actually learned something new yep. to then put into the next wave. Yeah. And so it got easier and easier, even though the water was getting rougher. Yep. It actually got easier because I feel like I actually knew what to do, and I felt confident in myself instead of just feeling confident in Nisha. Like at the beginning, I was just like, I'm confident that Nisha's got this, <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like, I'm confident that I have got this. <laughs> Yeah, she started walking her own board out. She started catching like when to do the upward dog. Yeah. 
the timing. But I feel like, like you wrote those... it like when like that last one, you didn't even fall off your board. You like just stepped <laughs> off nice and easy right on the Beautiful. side. It was so advanced. It's awesome. <laughs> so I really feel like yeah, I understood like okay, like finally by maybe like the third, I was like, okay, now I feel like I know where to go on top of the dog. And then by the last few, I was like, now I know when to like push into the board when we're walking it out and how to paddle and how to like using the, the board to help you. To help you rather than not get really pushed back, but to like push forward still. Yeah. So I feel like she's just a really great teacher, which I really appreciate. Also, <laughs> she did a full baby cat when I popped. I heard when, that. I like at one point just like went completely underwater. She, she fell in the water and I was like, ah! She just oh. lifted her up and I'm like, I'm sorry. Here you go, sorry. It was my mom, like, my mom instincts kicked in like way too strong. Like I was her drowning baby and it was her duty to save me. I was like fully, and I was fully in baby position. Like I was on my back with my four limbs in the air and she like scooped under my back and just writes me back up. Great. And I didn't swallow any water. Oh really? That's impressive. Even when I fully broke, like tumbled under. No diarrhea today. Yes. Great. I was Great. like, breathe out, just breathe out. And I didn't swallow water, so I feel good about that. That's awesome. I'm so glad you had so much fun. And this the more you so focus on fun. you, the less you worry about what's happening to you. Like you were focusing on when to pop up, when to yeah. pop. So you start internalizing. And you walk down those stairs, you hear the ocean. Like the ocean's gonna get me. Yeah. But then when you realize, no, I'm in control, I focus on me, I do what I'm supposed to do, and that's when you start having fun. It sounds like you got there really fast. And he is like, when you focus on breathing, and just like breathing at the right time, yep. it like, you take those calm moments and you just like center yourself again, and you like mentally, you're like, hey, I'm ready for the next wave. Yep. Like, it, it really helps. That's awesome. This is so thank So you glad you did it. I like wanna come back and keep surfing with you. This is so fun. Surf and skate all the time. Yes, and also, I think, that our crash was the perfect way. I mean, we had to. Like, yeah. two blind surfers oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. together, we had to crash. We didn't crash in the water. People wouldn't believe it. Exactly. <laughs> After surfing for almost an hour, I think I got to like an hour and a half, maybe even almost two hours, we did a little debrief on land, and then it was time to freshen up. Okay, so I managed to get the wetsuit off, which is a feat on its very own but I do have to share one tragedy that happened. I'm scared. I don't think I want to hear. I chipped a nail. <laughs> <laughs> do you see it? Yeah. It's lifting. It's lifting. <laughs> We're not supposed to get them done for another week. <laughs> Whatever will I do? I think we can live with this. I'm gonna have sand in my hair for days. Oh. Then I headed back to Pete's for a final goodbye. All right, so uh, Pete and I are back. I managed to get the wetsuit off. I got the, some of the sand out of the crevices. Some. <laughs> some of it. Um, I am dry-ish, getting warm, and uh, I'm just reflecting on like the experience this morning, and I'm just so grateful that you allowed me to come out here and do this with you, both like what we did yesterday to prep and then what we did today. Um, I think I understand completely why you love it so much, because um, the freedom to move within space is one of the most frustrating things as a blind person yeah. to lack. Yeah, it's gone. You're, 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 you're attached to someone or something all the time. Guide dog, cane, sighted guide arm. Yep. You, you know, sighted people get to like jump on a bike and go for a ride, throw their headphones in and go for a run, get in the car and drive. Like we don't have any of those things. And if we do, it's like you're running with a tether. Right. You're on the back of a tandem bike. Yeah. And still, you're constantly relying on somebody else for that experience. Yeah. And this is a way, that's I think why, whether, whether it's skiing or on the skateboard yesterday, like that's why I love speed so much. Cause speed is a feeling I cannot get when I'm like relying on other people. It's a rare luxury for a blind person. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel like uh, I really wanted you to experience the moment that Nisha let go or the moment you got up on the wave, that's you. That's just you and the wave and the ocean and the power and, and nothing else. Mm -hmm. You're not relying on anybody else. It's, it's, it's the only time, I, I'll tell you, I lost my eyesight slowly and the depression was setting in as it was getting worse. And because I was feeling my whole world close in, I was losing all those freedoms, all that ability to go out and do stuff on my own. And uh, I mean, it sounds ridiculous to say surfing saved my life, and people don't get it until they experience it. Yeah. And I think you might you might understand why, at least in some way, that did save my life. Yeah, I completely understand. I'm, you know, growing up being an athlete, 
that was one of the hardest things. Like I was a soccer player and that was my biggest passion. I felt like it was a huge part of my identity when I was young. Yeah. And, you know, I went competitive and at that point you train all year round, which includes indoor soccer. And because I've been night blind from birth, the indoor arena that we had locally to train at wasn't bright enough for me to see. No. And so I started being dangerous on the field because I was a forward position. So, you know, you're running with the ball. Yeah. And my family and the coach had to make the executive decision that I wasn't safe enough to play anymore. Mm. And that was like devastating for me to lose. But what I'm grateful for is that my parents always found a new sport to fill the hole every time I lost one. So that's how I got into downhill skiing was I lost soccer, but they found skiing for me for the blind. And similar to today when like Misha would let go of my board and it was just like me being able to take a wave. Whenever I'm surf or whenever I'm skiing, I always tell my guide like, if there is a section of the run where you think I'm safe to just go, stop go. talking, just let me go. Yeah. Just let me do my own turns and like you can jump in when you think it's not safe anymore. Because having those few moments of feeling like you are alone fully independently doing something and moving within space is this experience that sighted people can like never understand people that say that they they i hear all the time like i just need to go for a drive i'm like i literally can't even do that <laughs> like you get and i think the most important thing that you said and that your parents did for you and that mine did for me is as you were losing things uh, when you're losing your sight whether it's slow or fast um, your world does close in and you have two choices you can let it close in and you can you know you will get depressed and it'll be rough or you can choose it's going to be harder to keep finding different i mean you spent a lot of time getting good at soccer and then you had to learn a new sport yeah. downhill skiing i spent forever doing a bunch of i played football i played ultimate frisbee um, i was a sailor and I, as i was losing all of those i had to learn this whole new sport of surfing which was dreadfully difficult as you might have just learned the, 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 the learning curve is steep but the moment you get that one bit of free i'm free yeah i'm on my own it, it, it's all the learning curve is worth it yes. but i think the most important thing for blind people as they're losing things is find other things to keep living keep going forward absolutely because if all you're doing is living in the loss like you're you can't move forward yeah that's bad yeah and i think the depression is normal like i experienced it you experienced it i don't like it's that's completely normal to feel that way but you, you can't let yourself continue to live in that hole no. because it's just not going to be worth it. But are you addicted now? Are you going to be back here, like, knocking on the door next weekend? Like, I honestly want to go surfing? buy one of those. <laughs> I want, I, like, I want, like, it was so fun. I just want to step back on the board now. Yeah. I totally get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely addicted. I go out there. I have different injuries every week for, for one reason or another. I'm like, nope, still getting on that surfboard. I want to do it. You know, Monday through Friday, I'm stuck in my box and attached to a person that takes me around, which is I'm thankful for it. I'm very thankful for the people in my life. Yeah. But I get to look forward. I know on Monday, I know in five days, on, on Saturday, I'm going to be out there and I'm going to be free. And on a Tuesday, I'm a little bit closer. Like, I only get to surf on the weekends because of my schedule. But that's enough. Yeah. That's enough. I get to I get to look forward to that. I appreciate this experience so much, and I hope that I get to do it again with you. I'm really glad that you you, you seem to have you seem to have had the experience that I want you to have, and I'm really happy about that. I've got to say, it's really hard for me to wrap up this video, which is rare. I'm never speechless, but it, it feels really hard for me to put into words the appreciation that I have for Pete and for all of his incredible friends for giving me this unforgettable experience. I really enjoyed both the surf skateboard and the real surfing, and I found them to both have the perfect combination of being challenging, but rewarding. Not so challenging that I wanted to give up, but challenging enough that it felt really good to accomplish the goal and like conquer the challenge. I found the surf skateboard a lot easier than the real surfing, which I guess isn't that surprising, um, but I liked that I was honestly pretty comfortable doing it almost right away so I could start getting speed, which I'm a speed demon. Like when I'm doing things like downhill skiing, all I want is speed. So it was really fun for me to be able to pick up a bit of speed and start practicing things like carving and doing some more, I don't know, maybe slightly more advanced skills. Whereas surfing was definitely a higher learning curve. And obviously I'm I'm still such a beginner. Like I basically know nothing, but it was that bit more challenging that if I wasn't such a go-getter, I, I think I maybe would have given up, but I am just a determined person. And when I have a challenge put in front of me, 
I am determined to overcome it no matter what. Like challenges actually push me and fuel me instead of break me down. So I loved that little bit of extra challenge that made me just be like, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going every single wave. I honestly think I'm gonna get a hand board, which is the bigger one. And I might even get one of the Your Own Wave boards, which is the really tiny, super wiggly one. They're super different experiences, but I loved both of them. So I think I might pick them up and I don't know, find a skate park or, a driveway or something and just have some fun and keep practicing. And I don't think I have time in my life, unfortunately, right now for surfing, but that is absolutely something at some point in my life when I do have a bit more time to dedicate, I would love to pick up as a skill. And I can say that I think Pete and I have a lot more adventures together ahead to plan. We, I think both had a great time and I can't wait to see what the two of us cook up next. If you would like to follow Pete on his journey, I will link all his socials down below. And if you have any ideas of adventures you'd like to see Pete and I get up to, please definitely leave it in the comment section below. And I think we will both be up for the challenge. I have about eight episodes planned for this series, though they will be rolling out over the course of probably the next year because a lot of them do involve traveling and a lot of coordination, but I'm super excited. And if there are any blind people who you know of that have a specific skill or talent you'd love to see me try out with them, please also let me know. I will be eagerly awaiting. And until next time, if you wanna see me learn another water skill, you can click over here to see the first time I went mermaid swimming. Or if you want to meet another amazing blind friend of mine who's an actor named Shayla, you can click this video right here. See you next time, bye.